I remember the first time you saw me. You were ten. You wouldn't let go of your mother's hand. You jumped when the waves touched you, like you'd been jolted awake from some long nightmare. But you backed away only a little the second time the waves washed over your feet. And the third, you actually laughed. You were knee deep in the shallows, smiling like you'd known no suffering, no pain. You took to the water quicker than a fish, my sweet. I would know. You were still so reluctant to let go of your mother's hand. But that adventurer in you just won't be tethered to anything. And so, when she wasn't looking, you slowly waded through the water, towards the rocks, like a baby crab, moving ever so carefully on some strange beach where the sands feel different. You waded towards the rocks, towards me. I wonder how you look back on our first encounter. Whether you smile and stare off into space like me, or your face heats up in embarrassment and you quickly shake the memories away. Fishtail, fishtail, you screamed when you saw me. Saw my cerulean scales shining in the water, and you scrambled back as I came closer, stuttering rapidly about mint chocolate chip ice cream, and that cat plushie you sleep with to this day. I wonder what was going on in that little head of yours. Did you think your life was in danger? You stopped when you saw my palm reaching out, no webbing between the fingers. It was a human hand, same as yours, just a little bigger. With trembling steps, you reached out and grasped my fingers. The fear was gone from your eyes, but it only lasted for a moment. Your mother called for you, and you bolted faster than a young swordfish could ever hope to. I never got to see your face, you know. Even as I returned to my world, deep below the ocean waves, the look of wonder in your eyes that only comes to children as they see everything for the first time. A year later, I heard your footsteps again, on the rock. Slow and unsure. Nothing like what they sound now, as I see you walking happily towards me. But the way you walk is very discernible. I could never mistake it. You were eleven, a little taller and a little braver. You hesitated. Once. Twice. On the third time, you called for me. Fishtail, you yelled. You scared away most of the fish lurking in the shadows. It was a good thing I had already eaten. I surfaced and you almost managed not to back away this time. I wondered why you had to come to visit me again. You looked at me. I waited. You opened your mouth, but no sounds came out. In the end, you just sat down wordlessly and began watching the fish swim nearer as they returned with me on the rocks. I had to wait two years before your next visit. You sounded more confident now. You were 13 years old, on the crust of teenage. That rebellious phase in one's life where they can no longer be confined in the cove with their mother. They must venture out swim with the sharks and dolphins, delve deep into the bottomless ocean. I went through that, years and years ago. You walked all the way to the edge of the beach, fists tightly enclosed around something. Curiosity must have been just as visible in my face as the trepidation in yours. But you're not shy, not with me. You thrust out your hand, a small seashell, white as foam, lay in your palm. Were you presenting it to me? You wouldn't meet my gaze. I picked up the seashell. As I looked at the thin, eroded etchings, wondering how long 
this little thing and spent in the depths. You blurted out that you thought I was pretty. I sometimes wonder, my sweet. Would you have stayed longer if I had responded with anything other than blank surprise? It all happened so quickly. Your face became redder than a cape lobster. And then you ran away. Faster than I could ever hope to catch you on land. But I wasn't worried. As I held onto the shell, your strange, strange little offering to me, I knew you'd come back. And you did. You came back every summer after that. Hey stranger, what brings you over to my corner of the beach today? Oh, you missed me. I see I found myself a real charmer. Please don't apologise, I wasn't lonely. There's a lot to do in the waters. I swim with the fish and talk to them. They bring me stories from all over the world, and I dive down to explore the remains of ships from long ago, searching for shiny things to add to my grotto, like the little mermaid, but you already know that. <laughs> what did the fish tell me this morning? That you might be bringing over your friends when you came to see me? No, you want me all to yourself? <laughs> and you don't really have that many friends. A few good friends are really all you need, my sweet. There's nothing wrong with not being friends with everyone. All that means is you have more time for me. So, what would you like to do today? Just sit and snuggle on the rocks. <laughs> we can do that. You mean like this? No, I'm happy. I always am when you're around. In the summer of your 15th year, you came to see me on a windy day. The waves were higher than usual, and the sky was grey. Your face seemed to mirror the weather. You wouldn't tell me what was wrong. Earlier that year, you had decided to go out on a journey around the world. I told you about the sea of ice that surrounds the forgotten continent down south. But the penguins waddling about in the cold wilderness, on a narrow strip of rock, caring for their young. I told you about the sprawling reefs I'd seen, about the corals like colourful houses painted in every shade known to human and their folk. You said you wanted to see the corals. I told you some lay further out from the beach, in the deep. Too far away for you to swim, but you wanted to see them anyway. It was the first and only time that I gave you the gift of the merfolk. You sank below the waves, marvelling at how you no longer felt cold or suffocated or afraid. I took your hand and we swam together for miles. At last, you could see. You could see the corals. A sight I had seen many times before, but it was new to you. When you were too busy staring at the corals to notice me looking at you. And... I understood why the child from five summers ago had disappeared. They lived in your eyes, and they chose that moment to come out. No, I didn't say anything. It's just the birds. Oh, this thing in my hair. Yeah, it's a seashell. You think you've seen it somewhere before? <laughs> really? Ah, 
It looks familiar, but you can't put your finger on how. <laughs> yes, there are many seashells in the world, but this one is kind of special to me. It's okay, you don't have to talk. I know we're both comfortable with the quiet. Just let me keep holding you and brush your hair for a bit. I still remember the words you said to me long ago. You were 18. You've been crying. Someone you care about has hurt you. When you're at that age, the end of a relationship can feel like the end of the world. But I suppose such a thing always hurts, no matter how old you are, or how many times it's happened to you. On seeing me, your tears welled up in your eyes again. Salt water belongs only to the sea, not on your face. I didn't want to see you cry ever again. I wanted to protect you, to shield you from everything that brings you pain, to take you with me and see all the corals in the world. But you weren't ready for that yet, so I just held you close. And you sat on my lap, just now. And we talked about everything above, the roaring waves and below. I told you about maps and what sunbeams look like as they penetrated the water. About the creatures of the deep and the dreams they can see even with no light in their eyes. I told you how long I had lived. The strange things and stranger people I had met, and how loneliness can find you even when you have the entire ocean to yourself, especially then. You talked about your family, about the random playlist you've been listening to on the way over, about the last book you read, and how you wished it hadn't ended so quickly. You talked about not being able to stop growing up, even though you so badly wanted to. About how you kept getting older and older while I remained, cursed to swim in the world's waters forever. Your body and time would turn frail, and you'd forget things. You'd forget your memories. Others would forget you. In the end, you were afraid of being forgotten, and left on your own, as I was. But my sweet, you don't ever need to worry about being forgotten, because the sea remembers all. It's not possible for me to forget you. To forget things we said and did here, on the rocks. I wish I could tell you this, I wish the words had come to me. But they didn't, not in your language. Instead, I sang. You hadn't heard me sing before. I was singing to them, the jellyfish. They came. They filled the shallows all along the beach until the sea was glowing in its own light. A constellation of tiny ghostly lights in the water. And as you watched them, you turned to me and said, someday, You'd like to receive my gift again, to dive below the waves and live there with me. It was a promise. And then the summer passed. <laughs> no, darling, my eyes have always been this way. I was just remembering. Oh, I heard you. I suppose I never did admonish you for calling me Fishtail. And you didn't even stop after I told you my real name. It's because I like it. Fishtail is an apt description of a mermaid from a ten year old's eyes. You may try to make fun of me, but I can hear the affection in your voice every time.
you have done evil already? Can I see you again somewhere? Good. You better come back. I'll be waiting. Someday. Someday, my sweet. But the impermanence of promises isn't lost on me. If you decide you don't wish to leave the land after all, I'll live there with you. I'll care for you. Until you walk so far in the sand that I can't follow. But my sweet, I promise you, I will remember. <laughs>